everyone. Welcome to Kak Humipati Steady Group Pro Bono webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So nice to see many of you from different countries and different time zones. Before we start our webinar, <coughs> always thank the universe for giving us this great opportunity. And Dr. Sweta Singh, our Kak Chief Administrator, will start the session. Hello everyone, myself Dr. Shweta Singh, Car Chief Administrator, welcomes our uh, respected speaker, uh, Chairman and CEO of uh, Kavita Ma'am, Car Volunteers and all the attendees to Car Webinar. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce Car Homepathy Study Group to all of you. Car Homepathy Study Group Pro Bono was organized and founded by homeopath and humanitarian Kavita Kukno, President and CEO of Kavita Holistic Approach, Ka. The study group is intended to be an offering from Kavita to the homeopaths around the globe, sharing goodwill and solid clinical work within the classical model are foundational principles for the Ka. Ka mission and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths, mentor, provide excellency for educational purposes using holistic approaches via webinars, which are based on principles of classical homeopathy and provide professional continuing educational homeopathy credits for practitioners. We provide merit certificates for spreading the light of homeopathy around the globe. Dr. Kavita is a member of Kevin Friendly Foundation, a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. She is nationally board certified by Council for Homeopathic Certification, CHC, and a Gino CPD provider and serves as the associate editor for the Homeopathic Heritage. She is the recipient of Martha Almond Community Service Award by National Center for Homeopathy and Best Entrepreneur Award from Dr. N. Lingaraju, Principal of JSPS Homeopathic Medical College, Hyderabad, India. Tana, Telugu Association of North America, a prestigious organization, honored and awarded her for selfless homeopathic and humanitarian services at Ladies' Night Out on August, uh, October 2022, Mickey. Also, Dr. Kavita received the prestigious Legendary Homeopath Award with joint hands of Honorable uh, Health Minister Dr. Dhan Singh Rawat, Senior MLA Mr. Harvajan Singh Chima, Ex-Director Homeopathy, Government of Uttarakhand and Chairman of HomeoCure and Research Institute during National Homeopathic Seminar, Homeopathy, the Future Medicine at Kashipur on 24, uh, 1st August 2022, Dr. Deepak Sharma, Kai Executive, Dr. Rajneesh Kumar Sharma, Kai Advisor, and myself, uh, Dr. Sh uh, Ka team were also recognized and presented with Legendary Homeopath Award at the ceremony. We are proud to announce that Dr. Kavita was honored as the Woman of the Year 2023 from prestigious organization NATA, North American Telugu Association, USA. Dr. Kavita was also honored by renowned DTA, Datrit uh, Telugu Association Executive Committee on Mother's Day at Michigan, USA with DTA Community Service Award 2023. We're extremely happy and proud that we celebrated 12 years of her book, Beyond the Limits, a challenge to prove oneself. And in January, 2022, we launched her ebook, A Dose of Spirituality with Kavita. In presence of honorable guest speaker, American Institute of Homeopathy President, Dr. Alex Becker, and Council for Homeopathy CHC President, Dr. Sheetal Tiwari at our CA webinar. At CA's second annual celebration, our honorable guest of speaker, Dr. Johar Shah, Chairman of Enlightenment Education, launched audiobook and hard copy of her second writer, A Dose of Spirituality with Kavita. We are delighted to share that tomorrow, uh, that January 23rd, our spirituality book is going to complete its one year. Uh, and we have donated over $1,500 to 10 to 15 charities, which we have also listed them on the website. Dr. Kavita donated the proceedings of the book through Ka study group platform to various charitable organizations and homeopathic associations. To name a few, our Kevin Friendly Foundation, CHC, DHMA, GSPS College, VT Seva, and CH, etc. Interested one can reach us for details at carstudygroup at gmail.com. Purchase link will also be shared. 
As of now, we have over 350 plus recordings on professional webinars related to homeopathy, health related topics and inspirational talks available on our channel, Kavita Kukro. This webinar is moderated by Ka family, myself and Dr. Nikhil Kamri, Ka volunteer. It is being recorded as we speak and uh, we will take questions at the end of the webinar. We will post JOT form in Zoom webinar chat at the end of the webinar. Please fill the form to receive your certificate. Uh, kindly mute yourself and turn your video off for better connection. And let me introduce our honorable guest speaker uh, to all of you. We have with us today, Dr. Deepak Sharma, our enthusiastic and learned speaker. The topic uh, of today is empower your healing journey with homeopathy in ovarian cysts. Dr. Deepak Sharma is a PhD scholar and MD homeopath, uh, who is a homeopathic physician and educator he is a national and international speaker, founder and director of Orbit Clinics, general secretary of Delhi Homeopathic Medical Association, chairman of World Homeopathy Awareness Organization, WOW, the Netherlands, executive director of HWC USA. He is also a member of uh, Ka Homeopathy Study Group. He is a life member of many uh, associations like South Delhi Homeopathic Medical Association, LMHI, IIHP. He is a co-host of Health In Show, which is a live online video lect uh, lectures on HWC. He's a recipient of many national and international awards. So let's welcome Dr. Deepak Sharma to Ka platform. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shweta. And uh, as you said that I am a member of CAS, so I am just a member. So I am not an honorable guest or like that. So uh, I am yeah. here uh, just a student family. of homeopathy. Yes. Yeah. As you, as you said, the PhD scholar. So I am still a student of homeopathy. And today I am learning uh, more, most of the things from all of you and giving a little bit of knowledge from my side. So should I uh, start, Dr. Shweta? Yes, sir. just a second. And thank you so much, Dr. Nikhil and Dr. Nupur. Thank you. Yes, sir. Looking forward to a wonderful session from your side. You can proceed. OK. Shall I share my slide? Yes, sir. So thank you so much. Today our topic is empower your healing journey with homeopathy in ovarian cysts. So why we are talking about a small two by three centimeter of the organ the, about the ovary. So the whole webinar is concentrating on this small organ. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Shweta Singh, you are with me. And you will also speak on this topic and uh, we will uh, together uh, share our knowledge. So thank you so much, Ka and Dr. Kavita Kognor. And this webinar is uh, dedicated to Dr. Samuel Henneman, sir. And uh, we all home are there just because of him. So what will be the objective of today's webinar is and, uh, about the understanding of normal cycling. What is actually the role of uh, ov ovary and what is ovary uh, ovarian cyst and common things we should know about the cycle and the ovaries the homeopathic treatment and management and the role of diet and exercises and a few learnings from all of you so as all of you know about a normal female reproductive organ that is fallopian tube uterus uh, you know bladder vagina sagittal and you can see in the sagittal view not as if the urinary bladder. The fallopian tube, ovaries uh, are the main major part. The secondary organs are the mammary glands. So uh, this is the overview. And this is a common uh, overview of the menstrual cycle. So what actually start from, uh, what are the events uh, during the menstrual cycle are changes? So uh, start with the egg, with the developing follicle, then the ovulation, then the corpus luteum, and in each cycle, in every cycle, there are seven common hormones play a major role in which the three hormones, 
are releasing from the brain and the four hormones are uh, releasing from the uh, gynecological organs or from the uterus, from the ovaries and from the accessory muscles. So there are uh, all, uh, approx seven hormones, the seven common hormones which are releasing uh, to complete a menstrual cycle and uh, okay, during that. Uh, we cannot see your uh, complete slide, yeah. We cannot see your complete okay. slide. There is okay. setting is open. Yeah, that's it. That's fine. So the slide is not opening uh, as a full as and I share. Now it's fine. Right. Yeah. Now it's fine. Okay, that's good. We cannot and see the that, zoom, zoom version. Sorry, Dr. Shudra. Can I zoom it? No, sir. You can see the oh, sli yeah. sidebar. Mm -hmm. You can see only the slide bar. Sidebar and the Is this visible? No, sir. Uh... So, uh, yes, now no, it's fine. Yes. Okay, that's good. So now what I am saying that the uh, seven common hormones which are um, relating and completing the menstrual cycle of 28 days by the code. When Whenever we are talking about the mes normal menstrual cycle in by the book, there are 28 days from first day of the menstruation, which is um, starting from the bleeding per vagina. So that is the first day and the 28 days are last day. But plus minus seven days is also counting as the normal cycle. If the cycle is coming uh, before seven days or after seven days, then it is also considered as a normal cycle. So this is an overview. And now I am for this. So this is the structure of two by three uh, centimeter of the OD in which the whole process is done during the 14 days and in which the primary follicle is uh, made and then the secondary follicle, then the follicular fluid is there. And uh, you can see the ovulation and oocyte is released to fallopian tube. And so in this figure, you are just uh, showing the a normal structure. Like you are reading about the primary follicle, you are uh, reading the secondary follicle and the uh, uh, ovulation is there. This is actually, in, uh, actually not a simple process. This is a really complex structure in which uh, I told you the seven hormones are detected and some are releasing from the brain and many of them are releasing from the genital organs. So uh, you can uh, see my hand as an ovary. This is actually ovary and this is the fimbri. They are stimulating the ova and to the ovary and uh, from where the ovulation will be done. So in many books, you cannot uh, read about this process because the decision of the site of the ovulation is only decided by the fimbries. So remember that you, you need to understand the exact physiology of this ovulation in which the commonly seven hormones are related and many of the uh, factors like stress, like anxiety, like exercise, like diet. So many factors are involved. So this is not actually a simple process in which the, you can see the image uh, that is uh, going from the primary follicle to secondary and then the ovulation is done. Not exactly. This need a very perfect image from the female. And if the female is not uh, having the regular cycle and the ovulation is not done, then the proper cyst was done and as you know the cyst is what is cyst 
cyst is actually is accumulation of the fluid in which if all of the dead layers are there. So uh, the cyst is only the fluid like sac. When the ovulation is not done, then the uh, cyst is already formed. And every cycle, uh, like uh, you can understand about this, the right ovary is uh, ovulating in the January. Then the next one is uh, on the February. The left ovary is there. But in, in case the right ovary does not ovulate, then it cannot into a cyst. It is, it's a fluid-like structure. Then on the next cycle, the, uh, in the February month, left one is going to uh, release the normal. Then uh, the another when when the right side is already coming in the March month, then the ovulation again not done because already uh, old um, follicle was there, which already converted into the cyst. So this is actually a complex structure where uh, you can find out in two by three centimeter organs. So uh, actually for this, ovary is not actually responsible. Many times uh, the patient is coming with the ultrasound and uh, she said that doctor, I am diagnosed with the PCOD and uh, in my ovary there are multiple cysts. So uh, many doctors are doing the treatment uh, for the cyst, but cyst is not actually uh, made, made by the ovary. This is a complex structure. Many factors are involved uh, to make a cyst. So what uh, in the uh, what exactly done in the ovulation? You see in the uh, you already seen in the video, and it is a normal uh, figure where I can explain uh, on uh, about the normal cyst. So primary follicle, then secondary follicle in which the oocyte is there. And when the ovulation is done, oocyte is released and go to the fallopian tube. And if it is not uh, converted into the pregnancy, the menstruation will be start on the 28th day. So uh, there are uh, there is a big theory about this 28 days, but today we are talking about the ovaries. So think. By the uh, by, the relation of God, uh, you we, we can see the previous structure. You just see about the ovary that is attached with the ligament, and there are a fimbries. But uh, uh, if uh, God wanted to death, then the oocyte is only released from the ligament, and it can um, make this uh, whole process very simple. But this is not a very simple. If your fimbri is not working your ovulation cannot be done. So remember, your fimbri is the most important part of the organ if you want to a regular cycle or regular ovulation. So um, what is the hidden dynamics of the ovarian cyst? Ovarian cysts are fluid-filled sex, I already told, or the pockets within or on the surface of an ovary akin to a tiny bubble drifting in a vast sea of the ovarian milieu. So what uh, and we are just saying that is a normally fluid filled like a structure, but in this structure, uh, there is a many factors are involved. Evolution is a physiological model, uh, physiological phenomena, but if evolution is not done, then the oocyte or the secondary follicle or the tertiary follicle is converted into the sac because oocyte was there and the sac is containing the oocyte and that was there. So there are multiple cysts when uh, a patient is coming. So this is not a structure of uh, only one or two months. This is a long story since when they are uh, developing the multiple cysts. So you cannot consider the uh, patient of the ovarian cyst in a single month. So it is a long story. So uh, I suggest in every case that you should at least beyond go to the one year before what actually um, the history or the two year what exactly uh, female had. So we will talk in the case taking. So uh, there are many hidden dynamics in this ovarian cyst. So uh, what are the variety in What are the variety and complexity in that? 
ovarian cyst present in various forms from functional cyst to dermoid cyst, the cyst adenomas, and the endometriomas. So remember the normal cyst or the dermoid cyst, uh, you can on uh, see on the skin and uh, you can always see the dermoid cyst on the forehead. But uh, in the ovary, the simplest cyst is a, called as a dermoid cyst. The endometriomas are the cyst where the endometrium is uh, outside the uh, uterus or outside the ovary. Each has its unique characteristic, positive factors, and potential risk. For example, dermoid cyst, also known as dermatomas, contain various types of cells and can grow hair, teeth, or even skin. Cyst adenomas, on the other hand, can grow quite large and cause discomfort. Endometriomas associated with endometriosis can influence the fertility. So uh, the ovarian cysts uh, have the multiple type of, so, so do not confuse about the skin dermatomas cyst and the ovarian cyst. The commonly uh, cysts formed in the ovary are like, uh, uh, pathologically like a dermoid cyst. So recent, uh, recent research has begun to unveil the intricate connection between genetics and the formation of certain type of ovarian cysts. So in this uh, era, in last two to uh, three years, what uh, the physician are uh, actually having the connection in between the genetics and the ovarian cyst. So you should consider about the family history very strongly. You, uh, you can ask about her mother, you can ask uh, her about her aunties or the sister, about uh, the every female in their uh, in their blood stream so history is very important and the genetics are very much involved to uh, generate the ovarian cyst now uh, while not all ovarian cysts affect fertility this is actually true many of the patients are coming uh, to us in our opd with the ultrasound that doctor my daughter is having the multiple uh, cyst in ovary and the doctor said that uh, it can cause the infertility in future. So do not, uh, do not uh, say like these doctors and just say every uh, ovarian cyst cannot uh, do the infertility. So this is very common if ovarian cysts are less and they are very, uh, they are not very older then you can treat it very easily with the exercise, with the diet or the homeopathic medication or whatever you want, um, uh, the treatment. I'm not saying uh, that uh, you, we are forcing to take a homeopathic medicine. If you if you are not um, have believe any uh, on the homeopathy, you can go to any doctor, but it is treatable and every ovarian cyst cannot um, involve in the infertility. Now, and what is the ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women? This is a really uh, good point because um, in many females, when the ultrasound is done after menopause for the screen purpose, and the many patients are coming with the ovarian cyst. So a special consideration postmenopausal women with ovarian cyst represent a unique subset that requires special attention because uh, after menopause, the hormones are there, but uh, no, no evolution is there, no menses is there, but it is not a normal phenomena. So you should ch suggest a few tests to um, uh, rule out the cancer or any kind of pathology or whatever the symptom is there. If there is no symptom, you just take ultrasound and at the two or three months uh, uh, on the repetition and see the size of the ovarian cyst is increasing or is, is it still same or decreasing. If the size is still same or the decreasing, then you can uh, manage it by the diet or manage it by the exercise. And uh, But if it is increasing or if with the same size, you should go for the CA125 to, uh, for, to rule out any cancerous growth. So do not... Uh, uh, Take like at a normal case if you find a ovarian cyst after menopause. Now, role of diet, as I already told, diet is play, play a critical role in the management. The diet, where when where the diet actually plays. So many of the females are came in the OPD. Doctor, what is the role of diet in the in this ovary? 
so i am explaining uh, this about with the video i already uh, did it so on with the every patient i just explain about the role of fimbries and the ovary because if you have not a uh, particular vitamin c or vitamin e e in your diet so your fimbri is not work remember the diet is necessary with the vitamins with the omega 3 fatty acid to actually regulate the fimbri because i already told the if the fimbri is not touching your ovaries then there is there will be no ovulation at all so it is very necessary to repair or maintain your fimbries not ovaries i am again repeating you just focus on your fimbries fimbries are most important organ during the menstrual cycle but the ignorance ignorance of this fimbri are done by many physicians so they are not they are looking only on the ovary they are not looking on the fimbri size or the movement of the ovary and uh, uh, the fimbri so this is a uh, perfect uh, one to cure your ovarian cyst with the diet with the management and with the exercise and with homeopathic medicine so also exercise is also necessary because if your fimbri is not uh, getting regular exercises then there is, will be no evolution so exercise is regulate your insulin it will regulate your fat it will regulate your fimbri movement uh, movements and it will also regulate your ovulation process so uh, do not concentrate only on the ovaries you just um, take a part from outer side also like your fimbri like your fallopian tubes and like the uterus now uh, the diagnosis process uh, for ovarian cysts typically involves the gynecological ultrasound which can identify and characterize cysts not only the upper abdominal uh, ultrasound the necessary thing is the tvs transvaginal sonography is the perfect one but in india in the unmarried girl tvs is not recommended so so you have a, a choice of ct scan or the mri or uh, the uh, fallopian studies or the uh, evolution process or the follicular study you can uh, do with the perfect evolution in cases of infertility many of the female are came with the follicular study only during the case of infertility but it is also necessary if you unmarried girl with the uh, came with the multiple cysts so you can find out the uh, actually uh, the evolution is when done so uh, you can done a follicular study in the unmarried girl also now here is a common five remedies that is apis mellifica pulsilla lecasis cpi and calcarea cup these are the five uh, common remedies which i will discuss uh, with dr shweta uh in in our cases so uh, these are the homeopathic medicines so i am uh, Dr. Shweta, i am sharing my another style for the cases thank you sir So, what are the risk and risk factor for the uh, ovarian cysts? There are family history of PCOS and diabetes mellitus, type 2 diabetes mellitus, vitamin D deficiency, stress, obesity, irregular of use of OCPs. Now, I question mark about the obesity and irregular use of OCPs. Uh, so, what we are seeing in this um, uh, era that many of the female are came with a very sporty activity they have a very, very good uh, uh, muscular movements and they are doing the regular exercise and they are even sports women are coming with the ovarian cyst disease with the irregular cycles and with many gynecological disorders so obesity is actually a not factor what i include the vitamin D deficiency and the stress is the common factor and the commonest one, the irregular use of OCPs means uh, uh, the irregular use of oral, oral contraceptive pills to uh, escape 
the menses. So this is the commonest cause, but this is not written in any book. book. This is um, I found in my studies and is it is with my experience. So irregular use of OCDs in India, it's a common cause to uh, make a ovarian cyst or the irregular cycles. Now, this is a uh, HPT axis, you know, hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis is working throughout the cycle from first day to 28th day. And the silent symptoms are the irregularity in menstrual cycle, PCOS, uh, we can say the polycystic ovarian syndrome in which the multiple uh, factors are involved, body hair growth, growing on the chest, belly face and around the nipples, decreased breast size, enlargement of the clitoris, thinning of the hair on the head, called male pattern blindness, voice gets deeper. Other changes include the acne that gets worse, dark or thick skin making and creases around the armpits, growing neck and breast. So uh, you can see uh, this type of folds and what it is called, it is called as a acnanthus negligence. It is a pre-diabetic stage most commonly found in the PCOS patient or the patient in which the multiple ovarian cysts are formed. And this is dermatosis pulpurus, pulpurusa nigra, in which uh, you can uh, confuse it with the warts. So there is a, they, these are not a warts. These are DPNs, dermatosis pulpusa migra. When we are talking about the diagnostic criteria, there is no single test of feature uh, to diagnose the ovarian cyst or the PCOS because we cannot uh, clarify with the ultrasound only or the TVS. You should check the hormonal uh, criteria also in which the LH, FSH and prolactin and thyroid profile you should done on the second or third day of the menstrual cycle. Now, what are the complications of ovarian cysts? The first one is the infertility and the hypertension, anxiety and depression, diabetes mellitus, sleep apnea, endometrial cancer, endometrium and breast cancers are the most common complications of ovarian cysts. Now, what are the treatment plans? There are treatment plans. First is the medicinal plan, diet plan, exercise and counseling. And without even three of these, we cannot treat the patient as a whole. So you should choose at least three plants in, uh, from these four. You can choose the medicinal treatment, diet plan and exercise. You can cho choose the medicinal treatment, exercise and counseling. And you can choose the diet plan, exercise and the medicinal treatment. So whatever you want, what uh, uh, you cannot get a cure for any polycystic ovarian disease or the PCOS without any of three from these four. So uh, you should uh, not only correct it with the medicinal treatment, you should need to correct the diet, you should need to correct the counseling, uh, correct the exercise and the counseling. Now, according to the aphorism three, it clearly says that if the physician clearly perceived, so Dr. Henneman sir already uh, told about the if, if is a condition in which uh, physician, whenever the physician is clearly not perceived, then the case cannot be cured. So he should know about what is cure in the disease. He should know about the knowledge of disease. He should know about the indication. He should know about the knowledge of medicinal power. Even he actually knows about the choice of the remedy and the difference in between choice of the remedy and the medicinal indicated. He should know about the proper doses, then actually uh, he will be a good practitioner of healing art. And if it, it is really practically impossible in this era, you cannot complete, even you cannot give the proper dose as per uh, Dr. Henneman sir. The proper dose is very minimum dose. Many of them are not going about, uh, knowing about this proper dose. So we cannot uh, cure the whole case with uh, only with the medicine. So you should repeat the aphorism three again again. So you should learn about these things, uh, what he wrote in their containment conditions. Now, here is the uh, first case of mine. 
This is a case of 21 year old female with complaints of irregular menses for two years and having periods with only HRT, menses scanty, clotted and painful so much that I had to take analgesic menstrual bleeding only for one or one to five days. This is very specific that uh, homeopathy is the only science in which you can get the medicine for this symptom, menstrual bleeding only for one day or two days or for the five days. So we have the specific medicines for this. Family history was not uh, very significant. Past history was not significant except viral fevers. Physical journals are appetite uh, reduced, thirst increased, thermal hots, and desire for chocolates and milk, sleep uh, in quality proposition disturbed or abdomen light. So uh, sleep was not good. It is dis very disturbed. And the basic symptom is lying on abdomen. Mental journals are artistic ability, dancing love for, organized things much, sympathetic to sufferings of others. Suicidal thoughts are there. Life is space. As she has brought up in a much disciplined atmosphere as her father belongs to army field. He was very strict. From the very beginning, she loves her young brother only as she felt her mother does not love her much, rather brother more and treated her as a stepchild. She was pursuing serious preparation just her, only for the father's wishes. In fact, she loves to do charitable public works solely serving to human. She was prone to painting very much. She loved to dancing since the, the time of during her Early teens, she used to take coachings for math and English as an average. Child tends to have, but here her, uh, the basic significant history was we get after three to four months of this case. And here uh, it is necessary that, uh, that you cannot get the whole history in a single day. When the person is coming to you, you just uh, put on your case taking. That uh, we need, we should need in each and every symptom, but many of the patients are not uh, talking about them. So what we are doing that we are uh, doing the counseling for on every visit and want to uh, test the peculiar symptoms. And the peculiar was for in this case, her tuition teacher molested her badly four times. She told uh, this story about two or three months uh, after the first visit. Inappropriate touch her. She could not speak up afraid so much not to even share with her parents because of shame. If he spread out of uncomfortable feeling of counteract the patient and parents. So this is the uh, story in which we got the medicine uh, and everyone know about this medicine because for this kind of molestation uh, only found in a few remedies. Now the free, uh, she feel alone, bad, molested, even start to hate her common friends. She tried suicide but failed. Failed to give up as she could not able to want it out because she is artistic. She is in, uh, she loved to dance. She loved many things uh, but uh, cannot talk with the friends and cannot talk with the mothers. So this is the basic history in which we found many of the symptoms and the totality of symptoms we made. Desire for chocolates, love for painting and dancing, sleep on abdomen, fastidious, too much parental control, ambition and deceive, tendency to suicide, sympathetic nature, feels alone, fatal to others, to those love most. Now, there are the medicines. So, uh, can anyone tell which one you select in this case? Anyone? Pulsilla is here, lycopodium, natamur, arsenic, carcinosin, naxomica, platina, lecasis, sulfur, medina, CP, and thuja. Because most of the symptoms are covered by many of the medicine. Pulsilla is the first phase remedy. So in this case, we actually chose the medicine. Carcinosin. So carcinosin uh, 200 we choose and we give uh, the water doses. Yes, Dr. Shalin Kumar. 
and this is carcinogen. So the molest, the case of molestation, the history of molestation is the strongest symptom of the carcinogen. So we give the 200 in the potency with the water doses, followed with the lupramate twice in a day for one month on 11th May of 2019. Then the follow-up cases was, was with the follow-up on the LMPs was very regular, 16th, 16th, 16th June, 5th, then on the 24th of July, 29th of August, 30th of September, and that is still she is having the normal period. So this is the beauty of the medicine we have in our repertories and in our Metro Medica that we connect the physical state with the mental state. So what uh, we are doing uh, in the throw of the word, the homeopathy is the only science which connect your physical symptom with your mental state. So remember, carcinosin is the first grade remedy for the history of molestation. And this is the again a conclusion. As in this case, there was a strong history of prolonged child abuse. So we started with no sort indicated in order to open up this case. Sorry, here is the video of her. And there is no voice. Am I audible, sir? So this was the case. The next one is 25 year of married female came with an ultrasound with a huge cyst of about 10 centimeters, which was purely operative case by a case by a pathologist. So what was the presenting complaint? So in the first visit, she only uh, asked about the, can, can you treat these type of cases, doctor? She repeated many times. I told her that I need a symptom man. So what are the symptoms you have? So every time she said that, doctor, you are having my ultrasound and this is a very big cyst. So it is a treatable. Can you treat these type of cases or not? The question was repeated many times with this uh, from this patient. And upon the case technique, I found the physical journals, the appetite low. Menstruations are regular with cramps in thighs, especially initially two or three days, almost fainted and need bed rest. So you should uh, need to understand why a female is fainted and need to bed rest uh, before or after the menstruation. Why discharge, uh, why discharge per vagina? Very occasionally, desires for chocolates and sweets. A mental state was fearful, especially for uh, security of children. Dream of snakes was there multiple black colors of snake in the dreams with the fear irritable all the time especially on the family members for other she's so quiet and simple so these are the basic features of the homeopathy where we can select the single or the perfect remedies in our homeopathy so uh, the case was actually solved by the lecasis mutis one followed by the belladonna before uh, going to show my report uh, report of this case, I told the story that I chose the Lachesis Mutus 1M due to the history of dream of his name. But in the Kent Reparty, you did not find the Lachesis under the rubric dream of his name. So, but many of the symptoms are uh, selected to catch the Lachesis and the personality was there. Uh, and you can see the movements of the tongue, just like a snake. We are also representing the legacies, the night movements, and the curiosity to know each and everything in the perfect manner. She actually needs the perfect answers from the doctors. This is a characteristic of the legacies. Why I choose the Baradona? I choose for the Baradona for the acute case because when the cyst is dissolved, there are the two conditions by pathology. Number one, uh, either the, uh, the fluid can come out the ovary and, and just release from the uterus, or uh, what uh, the second stage is, the cyst can be burst 
if it is enlarged and inflamed, the cyst can be burst into the abdominal cavity. So there are only two conditions. Either it can resolve and uh, removed by the uterus or either it can burst and uh, the fluid can be uh, go to the abdominal cavity. The second stage in which the flow, uh, the ruptured fluid is uh, going to the abdominal cavity, this is a very dangerous case. And if the peritonitis is done, uh, peritonitis, uh, done then the case will be fatal. So you should know about the exact pathology, what, uh, where the case is going. In this case, the uh, patient was uh, complaining me about a discharge of blood like, uh, like a menstruation after three to four days and with a severe pain. So I, uh, I repeat the Belladonna 6C in every three or four hours, sleep for two or three days to reduce the actual inflammation uh, from where the uh, when the ovary was ruptured. But the uh, beautiful uh, case and the beauty of the legacy is that he drained all the material throughout the uterus and the fallopian tube. So this is the beauty of the homeopathic medicine where uh, the fluid cannot be go into the abdominal cavity. So here is the report of the same doctor and the same diagnostic center in which the first uh, ultrasound was done in uh, 4th of August 2015 and the report was a well-defined obliterated cystic lesion with intermural mild thick septation noted in left adenoxyl appeared to be arising from left, left ovary. No evidence of solid component C. Ovaries are not uh, delicated separately. Size of lesion approximately 10 by 9 into 8 centimeter. When the patient was come first time this to this ultrasonologist, he recommended to the urgent operation for this case. But uh, he actually uh, know about me. Then uh, he he already suggested that you can consult with the doctor Deepak Sharma. He say uh, to take care of uh, if possible with the homeopathy. And you can see. The uh, case on uh, 8 May, May of 2016, here the name of the Bhakti Sharma and Deepu is the same name of the same patient and the report of the same laboratory. There is a, uh, you can see the uterus is antiverted, normal in size and eco texture. It measures uh, this and this and my uh, myometrial echoes are homogeneous, no fibroid or focal mass um, uh, lesions are seen. Both ovaries are normal in size and eco texture. No cyst or mass lesion is seen in the adenoxy. Pause of the glass was clear. So uh, this is actually a beauty of the homeopathy where the uh, homeopathy works in uh, and dissolve all the biggest cysts in the no, very uh, small time. And after this, this uh, doctor, Dr. Sanjeev Sharma, who is the ultrasonologist, every time when uh, he got the Cyst in the ovary, he referred to a homeopath and uh, he referred to me to treat it with the homeopathy. So, this is um, a case of large ovarian cyst. So, thank you so much for today. And, Dr. Shweta, what you want to share, uh, I will uh, continue if um, anyone wants to ask any of, uh, thing about the ovarian cyst. We have many cases. So, whatever, if you want, I will share more. Uh, but, Dr. Shweta, you can uh, you please proceed with your case or with your uh, knowledge? Thank you. Our second speaker is uh, Dr. Shweta Singh. Uh, she is an MD homeopath and who is also our uh, KHA uh, chief administrator. Oh, we can't imagine the KHA study group without her. Uh, she is in all a complete all rounder and she makes our lives easy. She is also a recipient of KHA Hanniman in Award in 2023 and Best Performance and KHA Outstanding Award in the past. She is a highly qualified homeopath who has been a core member of Orbit Clinics since uh, 2014. Oh, also, she wore the crown of President of Delhi Homeopathic Association in December 2021 and became the first ever female president of this association which was founded in 1932 by Dr. Yudhvir Singh, the first health minister. She graduated BHMS from Baxter Homeopathy uh, Medical College and Hospital, Delhi, 
and completed her md uh, homeopathy from uh, shri guru nanak dev homeopathic medical college and hospital mm -hmm. ludhiana uh, she also has completed a, a post graduate diploma in health promotion from the national institute of health and family mm -hmm. welfare new delhi and currently she is pursuing phd in homeopathy from a reputed university she is also working as a senior research fellow in central council of research in homeopathy uh, headquarters in new delhi and she is a branch head of orbit clinics uh, nangal raya she brings with her a rich experience of more than a decade and expertise in treating many difficult cases um she is also working as a medical director of muskan foundation uh, she is the chief editor of biannual newsletter exploring homeopathy an initiative by orbit clinics she is also an associate editor of homeopathy heritage uh, she worked at the post of um, assistant uh, professor in department of organon and medicine and philosophy in a reputed medical college she is a recipient of many awards so uh, i, I guess <laughs> I'm sharing my screen. Thank you. Is it visible? Is it visible to us? Ah, uh, yes, it is visible. Okay. So, thank you, Dr. Deepak, for uh, explaining uh, all the things so beautifully: the physiology, pathophysiology, risk factors, and the cases, of course. Uh, so, females are the strong pillars of our society, and for an emergence of strong, healthy society, we need healthy women. and there are a lot of uh, milestones in a female life from the point of birth to menopause which affect their health physically and mentally and produce a number of disease conditions uh, which are uh, are true concerns so we have our pathy which is painless which is uh, sweet without any side effects and which uh, with which we can deal with such conditions so homeopathic case taking uh, is a process of knowing our patient and their sickness in every respect so that we can uh, treat uh, them in a rational way why do we case take uh, do case taking or ask so many questions to our patient that seems to be interesting weird sometimes strange and unique to our patient uh, the answer is to individualize them and what is individualization we have hundred of remedies of uh, a single clinical condition and from that those hundred remedies we have to select uh, following the cardinal principle of homeopathy the law of simplex or law of minimum we have to select only one remedy out of those hundred remedies so we need to differentiate in order to find out that similimum the most similar remedy for uh, the patient we need to differentiate each and every single case of ovarian cyst or any disease condition from others by uh, some exclusive features because no two individuals uh, can be same vital force is single but the manifestations uh, can be in many different ways what we call uh, the spectrum of symptoms so in aphorism 82 dr henneman describes no real cure can take place without a strict particular treatment of each case of the disease so definition of cure uh, seems simple at first uh, like just the disappearance of symptomatology but it is much deeper uh, from the point of organon and the changes made by the homeopathic the most uh, similimum the most similar remedy directly goes to the core of the patient to body own healing energy strengthening and balancing it 
So not only the specific symptoms of these cysts will disappear, but the entire spiritual, mental, emotional, physical being is restored to the natural state. That is the beauty of homeopathy, which you can't get in any other pathy. Now in aphorism 153, in search for a homeopathic specific remedy, there are no specific remedies in homeopathy. And we need to find out the most similar remedy and how we will do that. We, will, we can only find out the most, uh, we should find out the more striking, singular, uncommon, peculiar characteristic symptoms of the case of disease, which are chiefly and the most solely are the guide to that, the, uh, that remedy, which is the similim. Every single case or every curable case has these signs and symptoms, but they are hidden in the details of the case, in the, uh, in the physical generals or in the mental generals, particular symptoms, they are hidden. And we, the homeopath, should possess the quality or should be skillful to dig them out so that we can find the most similar remedy for the particular case. We can find those striking, singular, uncommon characteristic symptoms from the history of presenting complaints or from the physical or mental generals, etc. That's why case taking require a lot of uh, skill, the art of the physician, it is not a mechanical process. Female case taking, Dr. Hanneman describes the female case taking in aphorism 94 footnote. And uh, what he said in chronic disease of females is it is specially necessary to pay attention to pregnancy, to the stage of pregnancy, sterility, sexual desire, accouchment, uh, the process of labor or delivery, miscarriages, the lactation period, and the state of menstrual discharge. With respect to the last named, particularly, we should not neglect to ascertain if it recurs at too short intervals. So we should make an in-depth uh, in uh, inquiry about the menstrual cycle of a female, we should ask when it occur, what is the uh, menarche uh, date, year, or if it is occur, reoccur at two short intervals, or if it is delayed. As Dr. Deepak said, plus minus seven days is normal. But beyond that limit, it is not normal. So we should inquire about it. Uh, delayed beyond the proper time, how many days it lasts. So we should ask about the duration of the menses, whether uh, the flow is uh, continuous or it is interrupted, what are the timings, what uh, is its general quality, how dark it, uh, is its color, the color of the menstrual flow is important to differentiate between the remedies, whether it is associated with some symptoms, uh, if there is leucoria before its appearance or after its termination, uh, but especially what bodily or mental ailments accompanying the menstrual cycle. So we have to inquire about it. What sensation, if there is pain, what kind of pain it is, when it is occurring, we have to ask everything about it before the period, before, during, and mens uh, after. Menses is very important uh, for the uh, when, whenever we are asking the history or in females. Uh, but uh, it is preceded, accompanied, or followed. If there is leucoria, so we have to find the nature of leucoria, what sensation attained its flow, what uh, is the quant quantity of that uh, white uh, discharge per vagina and what are the condition and occasions under which it occurs. So we have to inquire about all these things in a, whenever we are treating females. Then uh, I'm going to share uh, a case 
uh, a white uh, British complexioned lady aged 39 years came to me for the treatment of her left-sided ovarian cyst. It was a hemorrhagic cyst of uh, 35 mm. Uh, she came with the report, uh, USG report in her hand and she's presenting with pain in left iliac and hypogastric region since three months, which is which was aggravated during menses. And there is dysmenorrhea associated with uh, dysmenorrhea associated, and it increases when the flow starts. And there were early profuse prolonged menses uh, since two to three months. Uh, it continued for 10 days or more. There was white discharge per vagina, which is thick, white, and little offensive in nature. Associated complaints were, there was constipation. Uh, there is bleeding per rectum occasionally since one year on and off, uh, which is bright red in color and uh, with pain during and after stool. She was also complaining of pain and heaviness in legs. There was a sense of fragility. There were muscular cramps or uh, twitchings, which, which is aggravated at night. There is a sense of brittleness in her legs. What is uh, basically brittleness? Uh, she's when uh, when I touch her legs, she just uh, cried with pain. Almost everything is intolerable to her. She don't, uh, she don't allow me to touch her legs and she, can't, she has difficulty in walking. Slight touch or slight movement of the legs causing severe pain. So there is, she's very uh, delicate. She's very sensitive. So, uh, there is brittleness of the bones or there is brittle or sensitive, extreme sensitiveness in her legs, which is aggravated during night and touch. Then in physical generals, the desire was 40. She craves 40, seven to eight cups per day. Though it causes flatulence, but she can't resist the craving. She just uh, craves 40. In stool, we have already discussed, uh, she was constipated and there is history of piles, painful stools on and off with bleeding. And uh, sometimes the pain is much that the stool recedes back. Perspiration was more around the neck and genitalia, which uh, she complains of smell, uh, sweetish smell from the genitals. That could be because of the profuse perspiration and the thermals were chilly. In the mental generals, she's irritable on slightest trifles and there is so much anger towards her family members. She fights with husband and mother-in-law on every little things and she's very quarrelsome. Every contradiction aggravates her. There were dreams of falling. She jerks and sleeps if, uh, as if she fell down from a high places. And she also complaining of dreams of dead people. Sometimes uh, she saw uh, dead relatives or sometimes uh, her own uh, dream of being died. The totality of symptoms which I made were the left-sided hemorrhagic ovarian cyst. There was pain, left ovary, aggravation menses during. There's pain, aggravation with the flow. And there's desire for tea, dreams of falling from high places. Dead people sweat on neck and genitalia which smells sweetish and brittleness of bones. So can anyone guess the remedy? Anyone else? Great. On repertorization, On repertorization, the highest grade remedy was puja, which is covering most of the symptoms. 
uh, in the repertory, I can't find uh, that left ovaries were affected uh, in Thuja, but yes, uh, on further study, we have found this and uh, I chose Thuja and gave 200 single dose in that case, followed by Rubramed 30 for one month. Because uh, when we differentiate the remedies in repertorization chart also, so Thuja has its, a profound action upon the glands with stitching, tearing pain. The pains are as if glands were being torn to pieces. The ovaries are much more affected than any other glands, especially the left ovary. And our patient uh, has this hemorrhagic cyst in the left ovary. Then the, there is violent pain in left ovary, which comes coming on at the time of menstruation, continuing uh, during the flow. In Thuja, the pains are extending down the thighs or in any direction, and it increases as the flow comes on. There were stinging, tearing, burning, bursting pain, as if parts were being torn out. Makes her cry aloud. She goes into the hysterical state because of such pains. Then in the mental symptoms, if we discuss the mentals of Thuja, it include irritability towards her family member, which she is yet to able to control in front of strangers. She has a disposition to cheat. Now, if we talk about the irritability or anger of Thuja, from where it comes? why the Thuja patient is angry towards her family members. Because uh, she faced the you know, rude behavior of the family members. For example, a girl married uh, and uh, get into the in-laws house and the behavior of the family is not good towards her. They are rude to her and whenever uh, they make her embarrassed in front of them or they're always reproaching, they're always rude, they make her embarrassed. She uh, takes the responsibility, she's doing it well, but she's not getting any appreciation. They, are, they always try to make her embarrassed in, for, in front of everyone or the husband is rude to her or the uh, in-laws are rude to her. So she developed those kind of anger towards them. She becomes, uh, she feels neglected. She feels worthless. And so this anger develops towards them. So she, she wants to be alone. There is emotional sen sensitiveness. There is fixed ideas as she's pregnant, living animals were in the abdomen, uh, stranger were at her side of being under the influence of superior power and the soul and body are separated. There is no use trying to reason them out of her. It seems to her that she's very delicate, that she's made of glass, that she will break. So that rudeness turns, uh, increase or aggravates her anger towards her family members. And she's manipulative uh, in front of the strangers. She won't show the bad side of her in front of the strangers. She's, she, uh, she, she, she won't show the ugliness of her uh, in front of the stranger. She, she manipulate to be very nice in front of others. But towards the family members, there is a lot of quarrelsome, there is a lot of anger and irritability. That is the uh, core uh, symptom of Thuja patient. They don't uh, like to be contradict. Music cause weeping and trembling in Thuja patients. When walking, we have already uh, told about the brittleness, need, brittleness of Thuja, which is in everything. When walking, the limbs feel as if they would break. 
she has that weakness in all over the body as if the limbs are made of wood there is heaviness of limbs there is uh, she feels as if they would break easily the body is very brittle there is emotional and physical brittleness in thuja patients they cannot tolerate anything everything is intolerable to them they cannot tolerate a little cold air uh, change of weathers they cannot tolerate little cold or little warm hot they cannot tolerate a single piece of ice cream they would say uh, i i will have i would have uh, throat uh, sore throat if i take this everything is very uh, uh, intolerable to them there is extreme sensitiveness and in those cases uh, the physician got confused what to advise to the patient if we ask them uh, if they are feeling hot we ask them to uh, get into the cold air or in the ac room they would say i can't tolerate tolerated if they feel cold if we ask them to cover up they will say i will i would feel hot so there is a state of confusion for the physician what to advise because of this brittleness of thuja that is the most characteristic symptom of thuja patient then if we talk about the perspiration the thuja uh, patient have perspiration on the uncovered parts or all over except head when he sleeps stops when wake up profuse sweetish in nature smells like honey sometimes it is pungent and garlic and strong a pungent odor emanates from the genitals sweetish honey like order to the sweat from the genitals the order is also like burnt horn burnt feather or burnt sponge such orders are particularly present when there are fig warts upon the genitals that thuja cures so if there are uh, a case uh, if there are cases of um, genital warts or fig warts upon the genitals and there is uh, in addition there is such uh, profuse sweat with sweatish or pungent smell you can prescribe thuja in those cases they are particularly thuja cases then clark says people are all vaccinated and drinks tea he used to say and thuja is the greatest antidote to tea and vaccination which is suited to this patient too in the next three cycles menses were on time and uh, usg was done after 3 months uh, in between because everything is going smooth so there will uh, there was no change of any remedy uh, and the results are you can see in 1st august 2021 the usg shows uh, left ovary uh, hemorrhagic cyst of size 35 mm and in the next usg uh, in october after 2 months the usg was normal so this is from my side thank you so much thank you dr shweta um thank you now uh, uh can we uh, any questions from anyone regarding uh, for the uh, regarding from uh, from speak, uh, for the speakers okay uh, if you have any questions later on you can uh, email to us and i think uh, uh, we will proceed ahead with the certificates Sure. Um. Uh, first, I would like. Uh, I will share my screen, right? So. Um,
the first uh, speaker, Dr. Deepak uh, Sharma. Thank you for being with us and sharing your valuable information. And it is a, always a pleasure to have you on these talks. I mean, you share a wealth of knowledge with us always. And uh, uh, as second, I would also like to thank uh, Shweta Singh for her, um, as always, um, being uh, having very enlightening talks and the great effort she makes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nikhil. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for such an interesting thank session. You. It was really great learning uh, with excellent case sharing. And it was really informative. And we have with us Dr. Nupusha. Uh, and I would like to invite her for uh, to read Code of Ethics. Dr. Nupur, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Nupur, and it's a great privilege to be a uh, car volunteer. And I would like to take opportunity to read the code of ethics. To be a car speaker, need at least one to two active volunteers. Only car speaker teams are promoted in newsletter and web uh, webinars. Car provide volunteering for two to twelve months, respect and inspire volunteers to grow. Active volunteers will be promoted through our website, social media, and added to the WhatsApp group. Articles of the volunteers will be posted on ACA website and newsletter and will be sent for publication at other journals too. Volunteers and speakers are eligible for prestigious CAR annual award. Volunteers are eligible for CAR inspirational talk. Volunteers are eligible for uh, case discussion. CAR promotes homopathic organization as well as their mega events. CAR promotes great work of, uh, of speakers through their book reviews. Honorable guests may pro uh, propose their future courses or events after the webinar. CAR maintain a healthy and happy environment to ke uh, so keep only like-minded talk. Minded Car requests everyone to maintain the confidentiality of the group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nupur. And let me announce the upcoming July webinar that uh, would be on 16 July 2023 at 8.30 p.m. IST and 11 a.m. EST, U.S. and Canada. We will have Dr. M.K. Sahani and, and Dr. Yashika Arora Malhotra, and they will enlighten us, uh, enlighten us on topic homeopathic approach in the cases where mind has dominating role in maintenance of disease condition. And Dr. Yashika would be speaking on infertility and homeopathy. You can find the link to register at our website, kavitakihomeo.com. Don't miss the webinar. And Dr. Nikhil, do you have anything to say? No. All right. So heartful thanks to all our viewers and followers to join us today. And we have many such informative webinars lined up in the upcoming sessions with many more renowned homeopaths. For the upcoming webinar info or any other updates, follow our social media handles with the name Ka Homeopathy Study Group uh, on Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, and Facebook. If you missed any of the webinar, you can watch it uh, out at our YouTube channel, Kavita Kuknoor. I'm thankful to all the CAR volunteers, uh, especially Dr. Nikhil, Dr. Nupur, uh, and all for their continuous support and selfless services with which we are able to organize these webinars in successful manner. For any other info, reach us at carstudygroup at gmail.com. And don't forget to fill the JOT form to receive your participation certificate. You will receive it within 10 days. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shweta. Thank, thank you, Dr. Nagel. Thank you, Dr. Nagel. Thank, 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 thank you so much. Shall I end? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good night to all. Goodbye to all.